Hi friends, you would like to learn about the relationship between Young's modulus, bulk modulus and the modulus of rigidity. Before deriving the relationship between E, K and G, we should understand some basic concepts of simple stresses and strains. So let's begin with the concept of linear stresses and linear strains. So suppose we have a member like this and this member is subjected to a tensile load P as you can see from this particular figure. When you apply the tensile load, it is going to deform along its length, something like this, friends. So, friends, delta L is the elongation in the length of this particular member due to application of tensile load P. If you see here, this is the cross-sectional area of the member. So, let us call this cross-sectional area as A. So, now we can define the linear stress as well as linear strain. So, friends, the linear stress called as sigma L is defined as load per unit cross-sectional area. So, we are assuming the member to be perfectly elastic okay so deformation is taking place within elastic limit in that particular condition the linear stress will be the load per unit cross-sectional area so we can write down the linear stress that is sigma l as load per unit area of cross-section and please remember we have assumed the deformation within elastic limit so here load is p and the area of cross-section is a as you can see we have assumed this area as area a similarly we can define friends the linear strain. So, linear strain which is epsilon L is defined as change in length per unit original length. So, here if you look at we have got change in length as delta L right and original length is L. So, the linear strain can be written as which is epsilon L so, that is given as change in length per unit original length. So, the change in length we got friends delta L and the original length is we got L. So, change in length upon original length is defined as linear strain. So hope it is clear. So we have understood the concept of what linear stress when there is a deformation in the length of the member we get load per unit area as a linear stress and change in length per unit original length as linear strain. Now so having understood the concept of linear stress and linear strain let us just revisit the concept of Hooke's law as you are aware if a body is deformed within elastic limit. Now, what Hooke's law says that is a very important thing. To understand at this level. So, Hooke's law says that if body deforms within elastic limit, then the stress is directly proportional to strain. Stress that is sigma is directly proportional to strain. Okay. So, from here we can write down stress is proportional to strain. That's a very simple concept. So, if you simplify this, you will get stress equals some constant times strain. So, here this, this particular constant is called as modulus of elasticity. So, here E is called as modulus of elasticity. E is called as modulus of elasticity. Okay. So, this is a very important point that is called as Hooke's law. So, Hooke's law says that within elastic limit, stress is directly proportional to strain. The modulus of velocity can be obtained by the ratio of stress to the strain. Okay. So, having understood this, now we can go for the modulus of elasticity. So now in this particular situation what we have seen there is a linear deformation so we will have a modulus of velocity corresponding to linear deformation and that is called as Young's modulus. So Young's modulus is the modulus of velocity pertaining to linear deformation. So when body deforms along its length the modulus of velocity is called as Young's modulus. Okay? So we are talking about linear deformation. So as we have understood in the Hooke's law the modulus of velocity that is E or Young's modulus is defined as the ratio of stress to the strain. So like that we can also define here. So we can define Young's modulus friends which is the modulus of elasticity in case of linear deformation. So it is defined as linear stress to the linear strain. So it is defined as the ratio of linear stress to the linear strain. So we have already derived the value of linear stress as well as linear strain. So we have got linear stress as load divided by area of cross section so that I can write down here so load divided by area of cross section and that divided by the linear strain which is the change in length per unit original length that is delta L divided by original length ok. So like this we can get the expression of Young's modulus which is P by A divided by delta L by L. So briefly we have understood what is called as linear deformation ok. So linear deformation 
is a deformation when there is a change in the length of the body due to application of the load and when there is a linear deformation within elastic limit we will have linear stress and linear strain we will also have Young's modulus which is called as the modulus of elasticity for the linear deformation okay so we have learned about linear stress linear strain as well as the modulus of elasticity now we will go ahead and try to understand the next concept so we are going to talk about the volumetric deformation friends so in case of volumetric deformation the body undergoes the change in volume or deformation in the volume so in case of volumetric deformation we will be discussing about the volumetric stresses and volumetric strains so let's discuss about the volumetric stress and volumetric strain now suppose we have got a body in the form of square block so i'm assuming all three dimension of the body are same so it is a square block okay so it is being subjected to the forces from all three directions that is x y and z direction so we have x direction we have y direction and we have z direction and we have z direction friends so this particular square block is subjected to the forces in x direction y direction and z direction as you can see from the picture so due to application of these forces there will be volumetric deformation so body is going to expand in all three directions something like this you can see here so it is going to expand in all three directions something like this so body is expanded in all three directions as you can see from here there will be volumetric stress acting on the body so how to define volumetric stress so in case of volumetric deformation the load divided by area can be taken as volumetric stress so here we don't go for area of cross section rather we go for simply load and the area on which the load is acting so volumetric stress is defined as load per unit area on which the load is applied okay due to which there is a volumetric deformation taking place in the body so that is what we have defined here so volumetric stress that is sigma v is defined as the force per unit area or the surface area on which force is applied so this way we can define the volumetric stress okay so due to application of this particular force there is a volumetric deformation taking place in x direction by this particular force volumetric deformation in the this particular direction and similarly in this direction this force is acting okay i have considered all three direction forces to be equal but it may be different depending on the situation okay so now we'll have a definition so definition is very simple the volumetric stress is defined as the force per unit surface area that is sigma v is defined as the force here force is p per unit surface area per unit area i'm writing area a. so this area i'm taking as a on which it is acting for example this area i have taken as a okay so force per unit area is called as volumetric stress so similarly we can define the volumetric strain so the volumetric strain that is epsilon v is defined as change in volume because in case of volumetric deformation the volume changes okay so the volumetric strain is defined as the change in volume of the body per unit original volume so it is represented by epsilon v so it's a change in volume per unit original volume something like this so we can write down this as delta v is change in volume and then divide by original volume this particular quantity is called as volumetric strain okay now we can also have because there's a deformation in the volume as we discussed so as we have volumetric stress and we have volumetric strain we can also have what the modulus of elasticity pertaining to deformation in the volume and that is called as bulk modulus the modulus of elasticity for volumetric deformation is called as bulk modulus we know that the modulus of elasticity is the ratio of stress to the strain so the bulk modulus will be the ratio of volumetric stress to the volumetric strain so here you can write down the expression for bulk modulus which is volumetric stress we got here that is load per unit surface area divided by change in volume per unit original volume so it is delta v per unit original volume like this okay so we have got the expression for bulk modulus we have got the expression for volumetric stress and we have got expression for volumetric strain okay so now we have understood the second case which is deformation in the volume now let's discuss about the third case which is the deformation in the shape which is also known as shear deformation okay so let's talk about the deformation in the shape how it takes place now if you consider here we have got a square block which is kept on the surface and let's say the bottom bottom of the block is rigidly fixed to this particular surface okay and we are applying a tangential force f on this particular face which is the top face of this particular block so when you apply a tangential force over here what is going to happen 
the bottom most layer the bottom most layer of this particular block is fixed to the ground while the top most layer is free so due to application of this tangential force this top most layer of this particular block will try to slide towards right something like this you can see here so it is shifting towards right due to application of tangential force so this is this kind of deformation is called as deformation in the shape or shear deformation so as you keep on applying the tangential force within the elastic limit the the topmost layer will keep on shifting towards right as you can notice from here so like this you can see here friends okay now here if i say this particular point is point o and this particular point is point l so initially it was ol but when load is applied this l point is shifted towards right and this becomes what l dash right as you can notice from this particular diagram okay and there is an angle formation over here you can see here so this angle is angle phi and this angle represents the extent of deformation if the deformation is small this angle will be small Def if deformation is large this angle is going to be large it means this phi represents the shear deformation or deformation in the shape and just to tell you this phi is also called as shear strain this is also called as shear strain so more is the value of phi more will be the value of strain okay so phi is also called as shear strain please remember this okay so now we have understood how the deformation in the shape take place due to application of tangential force this force is tangential force so it is also called a shear force so whenever a tangential force is applied this kind of shear deformation takes place okay so now in this particular case we have a shear stress shear stress is defined as the tangential force per unit area so if you see here on this particular area which is the top face of the block on this particular area this tangential force is acting so this tangential force f divided by this particular area on which it is acting is called as shear stress so shear stress is defined as the tangential force per unit area okay so shear stress is tangential force f per unit area tangential area or the same area on which it is acting so here shear stress will be f divided by area which is a so we have understood what is shear stress so shear stress is tangential force per unit tangential area so this was the area on which it was acting and the tangential force is f so f by a is called as shear stress so similarly we can also define the shear strain now as i told you the shear strain is the measure of deformation how much body undergoes the deformation so if you look at this particular angle friends so if you look at this angle that is angle phi this represents the the measure of deformation if the value of phi is smaller it means the deformation is small and and if the value of phi is larger that indicates the larger deformation in the body okay so it means this phi indicates the deformation in the shape and it is also called as shear strain so shear strain is simply given by this particular angle that is phi okay now if you look at here initially this was the point l and it got deformed to l dash so if you take a triangle o l l dash you can write down tan phi as l l dash divided by this distance that is o l but we know that we are discussing about a very small deformation okay this angle phi has to be very small so when angle phi is very small tan phi will be approximately equal to phi so we can write down straight forward the phi which is shear strain equals l l dash divided by o l this l l dash is called as lateral displacement this is called as lateral displacement friends okay so shear strain that is phi is the ratio of lateral displacement of this particular layer divided by its distance distance of this layer from the fixed layer this is fixed layer friends this is called as fixed layer okay so the ratio of lateral displacement of a layer to its distance from fixed layer is called as shear strain so like that we define it so shear strain is defined as the ratio of lateral displacement of any layer so this layer i am considering topmost layer to its distance from fixed layer this is a fixed layer so its distance from fixed layer is ol so shear strain phi is given as l l dash divided by ol as i have shown over here friends now for deformation in the shape we got stress that is shear stress we got strain that is shear strain so the ratio of shear stress to the shear strain is called as modulus of rigidity or shear modulus it is called as modulus of rigidity or shear modulus so so modulus of rigidity or shear modulus is defined as the ratio of shear stress to shear strain so modulus of rigidity is written as the ratio of shear stress to shear strain that is called as phi 
so we got the expression for modulus of rigidity we got expression for shear stress expression for shear strain as well as the expression for modulus of rigidity